Um, this is my first time giving one of these talks, so I apologize for the nerves in advance. Um, so just to get a rough idea of how many of you have worked with Airflow, um, can you just raise your hands if you've um, got any experience with it? OK, so a few of you, yeah. Cool. So yeah, just to explain um, very briefly what Airflow is. So Airflow is a workflow orchestration platform. So what this means is you can define a bunch of jobs that you want to run. And um, each of these jobs is composed of various tasks and that you define your dependencies between these tasks. And um, they're represented as a DAG. So this stands for Directed Acyclic Graph, which sounds fancy, but it's quite a straightforward concept. Um, and you can see an example of one there on the slide. Um, so DAGs are just um, written in Python, so they're very straightforward to create. And um, so once you've created these DAGs, you just tell Airflow when you want to schedule these DAGs. So you can schedule them, for example, on an hourly schedule, uh, uh, hourly schedule, uh, five minutes daily, when you want them to start, when you want them to end. Um, and then Airflow kind of takes care of the rest. Um, and it also gives you a nice um, UI on top so you can monitor um, how your jobs are performing. Um, so here at Secrescapes, we have, at the moment, just over 300 DAGs um, running in production. Um, and most of them are running on an hourly schedule. Um, but as we grow, we're likely to need to run more of these. So we're looking at possibly running up to 1, 2,000. Um, and on a lot more frequent schedule, so possibly every two to five minutes. Um, and so one of the issues that we've seen currently in production is that occasionally the airflow scheduler will be quite slow to assign new work. So we've seen with some backfill jobs that there can be kind of several minute gaps between successive runs. Um, and so kind of as we go forwards and with um, yeah, as we go forward and we want to scale this um, data pipeline up, um, we needed to address some important questions um, to understand whether like, Airflow can scale um, and whether specifically it can scale for the, the types of workflows that we want to run. Um, so specifically like jobs running every five minutes. Um, and also we needed to know whether our implementation of Airflow could scale. So uh, we had a few different hypotheses for why um, we were seeing such issues in production. Um, initially, our uh, first um, hypothesis was that our implementation on top of Airflow is inefficient. Um, we knew that lots of big companies are using Airflow and using it at scale. So we thought that perhaps, yeah, it's just the way that we're using Airflow, which is not um, no, not optimized. Um, secondly, um, we wanted to test the hypothesis that our infrastructure is a bottleneck. And finally, uh, it's important to answer the question um, whether or not Airflow is designed to handle the kind of workloads that we're running here. So just to give you a, a brief description of um, yeah, our our Airflow implementation. Um, when we originally designed our data pipeline, we wanted a way of building um, Airflow DAGs that firstly wasn't too tightly coupled to Airflow. So as um, all of you are probably aware, um, the world of data science and data engineering moves very rapidly. So we wanted to ensure that um, our implementation wasn't too tightly coupled to any particular framework. Uh, secondly, we wanted to ensure that um, we could generate DAG files with the least amount of effort. So because we have so many jobs running in production, um, we need to ensure that for kind of standard types of jobs, we can create new DAGs very easily. And finally, we wanted a way to validate our jobs before they go into production, because it's very easy for um, human error to creep in and um, issues are of, of, uh, often not spotted until um, the jobs actually go live. Um, since Airflow DAGs are just simple Python objects, we thought um, an elegant way 
of generating these files would be based on some config that we have um, and or uh, metadata. So here are, here are a couple of examples. So on the left, we have a, a JSON config file which represents a common task in our um, data pipeline. And on the right, we have an example of a script where we have some metadata at the top of the file which um, our DAG builder can use to generate a DAG file from. So how did we go about testing these various hypotheses? So we kind of took a two-fold approach. Um, we first wanted to test the, the baseline performance of Airflow to ensure that um, Airflow itself could handle the load. So in order to do this, we created some DAGs um, which were very simple and um, non-intensive. So they just simply um, contained two tasks that had a sleep in them. And this enabled us to see whether it was the Airflow scheduler itself um, which was the bottleneck and not our work. And secondly, we wanted to yeah, test our implementation of Airflow. So to do this, we created um, two versions of the same DAG, um, and we chose a DAG that kind of simulated a, a real-world example of um, an extract job that we have in our pipeline. Um, and if I just show you, so here we have kind of like the two versions. These are just written in pseudocode to make it easier to understand. Um, so on the right, we have the example of our uh, dynamically generated DAG, which has a, a manifest, which is effectively our config file. And we have the DAG builder, which then reads in that config file and generates the DAG. And on the left, we have uh, what we call like a vanilla implementation where we define the Airflow DAG explicitly and um, we assign, assign it a task to run. So we actually found that just the process of running these experiments um, gave us the opportunity to learn a lot of different things. Um, so firstly, we found that having a Dockerized setup made it really easy to run all these tests. So it helped us to ensure that we had a reproducible environment that we could then deploy to um, any particular machine and we were getting reproducible results. Secondly, um, Having every person in the uh, data team being self-sufficient saved us a lot of time. Um, so for example, having things like admin access to the um, cloud accounts enabled us to spin up multiple machines in parallel so that we could run as many tests as we wanted. Um, however, we did need quite a bit of platform support from time to time. Um, this was especially true when we were running tests on the distributed environment where um, where deploying and scaling that environment um, involved um, a bit more work. Um, having tooling in place to generate hundreds of these DAGs on demand um, was also necessary in order for us to run multiple variations of the test. Um, we found that along the way, we needed to understand all the different config um, that Airflow has um, because yeah, if you, don't, if you don't get the config right, um, you can end up running into scaling issues um, and it's the, actually the config that's limiting how much you can scale rather than your infrastructure or um, the code itself. Um, we needed to ensure that we allocated sufficient resources for the tests because we ran into some issues where we were running them on very um, low powered machines and yeah, we were reaching the limits of that particular machine and it wasn't telling us much about the actual test itself. Um, and finally, monitoring um, was key. So uh, monitoring both the hardware to, to kind of understand what's going on and the airflow metrics themselves so that we could um, understand um, how long tasks were taking, how, how long the lag between tasks was so that we could compare different implementations <coughs> Um, was critical. Okay, so what did we find after running all of these tests? So the tests um, that were testing the baseline um, airflow performance, um, we were able to successfully run 500 DAGs on a five minute schedule. This was on a single machine. And in order to go higher than that, we 
realised we needed a distributed environment, um, and using that distributed environment, we then managed to scale up to 1,000 DAGs. Um, in all of these tests, we found that there was some lag between the expected start time of each task and the actual start time, um, and this lag increased as the, the number of DAGs increased. Um, so I think kind of the key learning from this, this test was that um, depending on your workload, if you're not running particularly intensive tasks, you don't necessarily need to run um, your airflow environment on um, a distributed um, environment. You could probably get away with just running it on a single machine, provided that machine is powerful enough. Secondly, testing our implementation, um, we again tried to run 500 DAGs concurrently on a machine um, that was similar to our production machine. And um, it became very clear to us that running kind of DAGs that did real world work um, was very different than running DAGs which did nothing but sleep. So in this case, we couldn't run 500 concurrently. We got up to um, yeah, 233. Um, and the other key takeaway was that um, we found our, um, our implementation of generating these DAGs dynamically didn't add um, much overhead at all. Um, as you can see, it's yeah, a very minimal amount. Um, so yeah, that, that was interesting. Um, and it was definitely not as large as the difference um, that we found when we scaled the infrastructure and made modifications to the airflow config. That, that um, that made a far bigger difference. Okay, so just to conclude, um, yeah, um, first, our initial hypothesis that it was our implementation that was inefficient um, didn't turn out to be true. Um, it added a very minimal overhead of, yeah, less than about a percent. Um, in fact, it was mainly the compute resources and the airflow configuration that had the biggest impact on, um, on performance and how many DAGs we were able to run successfully. Um, we also found that Airflow can handle running large numbers of jobs um, at short intervals. Um, however, there are a couple of caveats. Um, if you are trying to run DAGs on a, high, um, on a high frequency, so say like every two minutes, you might run into issues where the lag in the scheduler um, kind of prohibits that. Um, there might be ways, ways around this, but um, we haven't done any testing into that, but it might be something that we look at in the future. Um, and you also need to be prepared to allocate enough resources, um, especially to the airflow scheduler, which is quite um, resource intensive. And finally, our current infrastructure can handle the current workload for now, but as we scale to um, yeah, several more hundred DAGs or possibly a thousand DAGs, it's likely that we'll need to use a distributed environment in order to do that. Okay, and finally, just a very quick cheeky plug. Um, we're hiring for our data team at uh, Secret Escape, so we have a number of different open positions, and um, you can find more information about these positions if you just Google Secret Escape's careers data. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and yeah, please let me know if you have any questions.